Okay, so hello everyone. Today we will talk about what to consider when buying a cordless drill. Now be advised, this is not a video about which brand is better. So if you're looking for that type of video, this is not it. However, if you're planning to buy a cordless drill but don't know how to choose because there's just so many to choose from, this video might help you out and I'll try to make this as comprehensive as possible. But things to consider when it comes to buying a cordless drill. First, function, chuck, motor, battery, accessories, and last but not least, branded or not. So we will discuss them one by one. Now when it comes to function, you need to ask yourself what you are going to use the cordless drill primarily for. Are you going to use it primarily for wood, steel, concrete, or all of the above? Because a cordless drill comes in different shapes and sizes. And of course, function. For instance, this cordless drill has only two functions. To drill, and you have torque settings here for the screw function. Now, there are people out there who believe that this is an impact function or setting, but this is intended for setting, I mean torque settings, when it comes to tightening screws. The higher you set the torque setting, the tighter you can get the screw in. Inside here is a clutch. Once the torque is achieved, the chuck begins to slip and you can no longer tighten the screw any further. This one has three settings. Drill, screw, and the hammer function. Now same with this one. It has torque settings too. Okay? See? However, you cannot use this to drill through concrete because unlike this one, this has a hammer function. If I put that on the hammer function, you'll see the jack bounce back and forth, allowing you to hammer drill through concrete. If I put that on the screw function, it's not going to do that. Similarly, on the screw function, it's not going to do that. Okay? Now, on this one, there is no hammer drill function. Now, if you want to be able to use your cordless drill to drill through concrete, you really need to have this function. This is a specific function, okay? Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be like this design. There are some that the hammer function is indicated in the torque setting or here, okay? But in any event, you really need to see this function present in the cordless drill. Otherwise, if you do not see this, it's not a hammer drill, then you won't be able to drill through concrete. Now, still on function, in most cases, the trigger will be a variable speed trigger, see? And you have gear settings here. Now, think of this trigger, okay? as the gas pedal on your car and this gear setting see as the gear shift so that is one thing to consider because there are some cordless drills that do not have a gear setting the more common ones is that they're going to have a low and high setting see this too has a low and high setting. And there are cordless drill out there that has three gear settings. Low, mid, and high. Now generally speaking, when it comes to smaller drill bits, you want to put it on the high gear setting. And when it comes to larger drill bits, you want to put it on the low setting. Speed is very important as well as torque is very important when it comes to drilling through steel. This corded Makita drill, I've had this for more than a decade now, this has only two speeds, high and low. Truth be told, ever since I bought this, 
I rarely ever had to use these two. This one I mainly use this for brushing because this much uh, this is much faster. Because of the variable speed and gear adjustment of this thing, I rarely ever had a situation of burning the tip of my drill bits off. Unlike when I was just using this. Now let's talk about the chuck. When it comes to chuck sizes, there are two common types. A 10 millimeter or 3 8 chuck like this and a 13 millimeter or 1 half chuck like this. Now with this, you can only use up to 10 millimeter drill bit. As opposed to this one, you can use up to 13 millimeter drill bit. More often than not, a cordless drill will come with a keyless chuck like this. Okay. Now, the advantage with this type of chuck is it's much easier to replace drill bits. Similar with this. Okay. And the, but the, the disadvantage with this type of chuck is that it does not grip the bit as tight as compared to a key chuck or what others refer to as a Jacob's chuck. Also, another thing to consider is that this chuck can only grip up to 2.5 millimeter drill bit. Okay? This is a one millimeter drill bit, I do believe. And with this one, I can use this to grip the drill bit. Now, what I would usually do if I'm going to use a drill bit that is smaller than 2.5 is instead of using this one, I'm going to put it on this chuck like so. okay now that's one thing to consider however depending upon your need uh, replacing the chuck is actually easy I'll post a link on the description below now let's talk about the types of motor a brush motor as opposed to a brushless motor this is a brush motor and this is a brushless motor. If the cordless drill has a brush motor, it tends to be longer and narrower. And if it's a brushless motor, it tends to be shorter and stout. Just like my impact wrench, it has a brushless motor, short and stout. On a brush motor, you'll see sparks inside. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, similar on my corded, corded drill. Part inside. On a brushless motor, there is none. Just like my impact wrench. There is no brush inside because there is no carbon brush. I mean, there is no sparks inside because there is no carbon brush. When it comes to power, a drill with a brushless motor is infinitely way more powerful than a drill with a brush motor. However, a brushless motor tends to be more expensive than the brush motor. It's about more than half or even double the price of a drill with a brush motor. But if you ask me, the power that you get from a brushless motor is well worth it. Example, even though this bit can, I mean this chuck can grip up to 10 millimeter drill bit, but when it comes to drilling through steel with this one, uh, I find it very difficult. With this one, even if I'm going to use a 13 millimeter drill bit, no problem. Even if I'm going to drill to through, say for example, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, maybe even 13 millimeter thick. Uh, 
steel. But anyway, the choice is yours. Just one thing to consider, brush and brushless. Generally speaking, a brushless motor is more powerful but more expensive. Now let's talk about the batteries. When it comes to the batteries, there are two types, I mean two factors that you need to consider. The connection type or connection mount of the battery as well as the voltage. Okay. Now when I was shopping for this cordless drill, I was also planning to buy an impact wrench. So I make sure that the connection type of the batteries would be the same so that I can use the batteries interchangeably. Okay. Like so. Soon I'm also planning to buy a cordless angle grinder and I will I will make sure that the connection type of the batteries is the same so that I can use the batteries interchangeably as well as its chargers. So that's one thing that you would want to consider. Now when it comes to battery voltage, generally speaking, more voltage, more power. However, I will warn you, especially if you're going to buy unbranded cordless drill, there are times that they would intentionally mislabel the product's battery voltage. For example, the reason why I bought this cordless drill is because I thought this to be an 18 volt battery. But in reality, it's only a 12 volt battery. Uh, I will post a link of this unboxing on the description below, okay? And this is only an, a 12 volt battery. So I learned my lesson, I will, I will share to you what I know. Now safe to say, most if not all battery packs, regardless of shape and size, is made up of this type of battery inside. This is a 18650 battery, and I'll open these batteries and I'll show you what I, I mean, okay? Okay, so you see, similarly on this one, okay, okay, see, and on this one, see, it's the same, 18650, and you can see there, come on focus, 18650. Now this battery has a rated voltage of 3.7. Okay, fully charged, it goes up to 4.2 volts. So, that's it. Now, in order for you to have a better idea of the actual battery voltage of the battery that you intend to buy, just bear in mind this battery. And you need to have an understanding of parallel and series circuits. Now, series connection, is when you connect the battery one after the other. So the more batteries you add up, the more voltage, okay? So for instance, if you're going to multiply 4.2 volts by five, you're going to have 21 volts, okay? One after the other, meaning negative, I mean positive to negative, then the next battery is positive to negative, and so on, okay? So this is series connection. The more batteries you add, the higher the voltage. Parallel connection is when you connect all the batteries of equal voltage, the positive terminals of all the batteries are connected, and the negative terminals of all the batteries are connected in the same manner. But with this type of connection, it doesn't matter how many batteries you add up, the output voltage will always be the same, 4.2 volts. But the current capacity of your battery is increased as well as the power or energy that it can store because you add more batteries without adding voltage, okay? So this is parallel connection. Now, parallel and series connection is a combination of series and parallel connection. So you have one row in series and these two are in parallel. So you add this up, it's going to, 4 point, uh, it's going to be 4.2 volts. Parallel connection, parallel connection, parallel connection, parallel connection, 4.2 volts, and they are all in series. So 4.2 volts times 5, you're going to have 21 volts. Now, for instance, if we're going to take a look at this battery pack, it has four 
the batteries of this. Now, if we're going to, three are in series, and the other one is in parallel with the other three. So, if we're going to multiply 4.2 by 3, it's only going to give you a voltage of 12.6. Even if you're going to put all these four in series, 4.2 times 4 is only going to give you 16.8 volts. So, this can never be an 18 volt battery. Okay? Now, with this battery pack, five batteries are in series and the other five are in parallel. So, you're going to have 21 volts fully charged. 20 volts if you're going to multiply it by 4 volts times 5. Okay? This one, 5 are in series. Okay, see? 5, another row, another row. 5 are in series and the other 3 are in parallel. So we're only also going to have a battery voltage output of 21 volts if we're going to multiply each battery fully charged by 4.2 volts okay so i don't know if that's what does mean but if this is supposed to mean voltage 128 volts i'm not sure and uh, that's not correct because if you're going to add up all these batteries in series there are 15 of these here 15 times 4.2 volts is only 63 volts but I'm not sure what this actually means but anyway we're talking about battery voltage okay so now that you have an idea of series parallel and parallel and series connections you can already have an educated guess as, as to the actual battery voltage of a particular battery pump even if they're going to mislabel it by like this you would be able to know that it's only going to be a 12 volt battery pack or maybe a 16 volt battery pack but nowhere near 18 volts and also with this knowledge should your battery in the future becomes weak you don't need to discard the entire battery pack you just need to open this up buy a few of these solder and connect them all together if you have an understanding of series parallel and parallel and series connections It comes to accessories, really it's up to you. You can buy with or without a case and all the other extra bits and drivers. You can choose to buy with or with extra batteries. Well, of course, the charger is a must. Really, it will depend upon you and your needs. As far as I'm concerned, I already have my extra set of uh, drill bits and uh, screw bits and drivers so it doesn't really matter to me I would however recommend especially if you're planning to buy a 13 millimeter cordless brushless drill it would be better if it comes with an extra handle something like this okay that you can mount on the drill this drill doesn't have that option this thing puts out a lot of torque and it becomes very difficult to handle it especially when using larger drill bits okay this can twist your hand and your wrist uh, if you're not careful so that is one thing that i would say is a must should i ever buy another cordless drill brushless drill like this okay I, an extra handle now whether you should buy branded or not really that is up to you as far as I'm concerned I have no complaints with this one. okay DIY use however I would like to warn you should, should you ever decide to buy a brandless cordless drill I think it's much better if you buy it from a dealer or any reputable hardware store that is duly certified to redistribute that particular brand that you wish to buy the problem with branded power tools is that they are a lot of them uh, are fake items they are commonly imitated especially if you're going to buy them online like Shopee or Lazada they would lead you to believe that you are buying an original item you pay it for at a higher price believing that it's the real deal only to find out that it is fake and you don't get the real value of your money so all in all those are the things that you need to consider when buying a cordless drill 
so i hope this video helped you out and thank you for watching